talk about the anterior injuries of the acetabulum. We have the anterior wall, anterior column, anterior either wall or column plus posterior renal transverse. So we will define these types of anterior acetabular injuries and we will try to differentiate the anterior acetabular types according to the fracture pattern in order to have solid diagnosis and put the plan for anterior acetabular fractures. Back again to the two column concept of Jodé and Littorlin. It is the basis for understanding acetabular and acetabular fractures. We have the anterior column and the posterior column. The anterior column has three segments. This is the iliac segment, the acetabular segment, and the pubic segment. We will talk about the anterior wall fracture, anterior column fracture. These are elementary patterns. And we will talk about the anterior type posterior hemitransverse, one of the associated patterns. In the AO classification, the anterior column and wall are A3, partial articular, A3. While the anterior column with posterior hemitransverse is B3. We will start with anterior wall fractures. These anterior wall fractures will have two fracture lines. We have disruption of the iliopectineal line at two points in the intermediate segment. So this will interrupt the anterior stability of the ascender. And it will involve part of the articular surface, articular facet, and portion of the articular facet. The acetabular fossa. However, the SQ pubic ramus is not fractured. This differentiates the anterior wall from the anterior column. The integrity of the SQ pubic ramus here. If we have this plane X-ray, we will have the two fracture lines. The aliobectineal line is broken in two points, but we have intact. Iliopectineal line and the femoral head subluxates anteriorly and medially sometimes. Still, we, we have external rotation, but the iliopectineal line, as we said, is still intact. So the injury is anterior, disruption at the intermediate segment at two points, the iliopectineal line is intact. This is anterior wall fracture. And this is the obturator view of the anterior wall fracture. And we can see the head joint is not more congruent. And we have the stability of the head joint. It's very important not only to assess the stability and the displacement of the femoral head, but also the marginal impaction. And it occurs usually in elderly patients with osteoporotic bone. We will have this type of injury. And the head will displace as we, we have the quadrilateral plate will displace internally and the inubitinal line will displace externally so the femoral head will come in between and dislocates until. Another point to evaluate the femoral head impaction. The contusion. This will determine the outcome as well. We may have a rare variant when we have the anterior wall equivalent to the posterior wall with a small fragment like this. It is very rare. So this injury is unstable and disrupts the stability and congruity of the hip joint. It is an indication of surgery. Displaced anterior wall fracture, incongruent hip joint, unstable hip joint, Progressive loss of reduction, all are indications for internal fixation, anatomical reduction and internal fixation. Again, what is our approach? It is inguinal or modified stop approach. We will attack from anterior and we will reduce the hip joint with traction, longitudinal and side traction. This will unload, this will unload the fracture site. This traction will unload the fracture site and will reduce the fracture indirectly. But 
we should fix this fracture to maintain this anatomical reduction. If there is marginal impaction, we should address it, elevate the depressed fragment like any intraarticular fracture, like the tibial plateau fracture, for example, and put bone graft as well. All the reduction techniques help here. We may use the pelvic reduction clamps. We may use the bone spike pusher. We will apply leg screws and a neutralization plate. The second fracture is the anterior column fracture. Here we have varieties. We may have very low fracture. We may have low fracture, intermediate fracture, or high fracture according to the fracture line according to the origin of the fracture line. But in all types, we have disruption of the SQ pubic rings. This will differentiate it from the anterior wall fracture. So we can now diagnose it as anterior column fracture. And these are the varieties, whether it is low fracture, intermediate fracture, or high fracture, where the interruption is in the electrist. Again, we should address the femoral head dislocation and the position of the femoral head and whether we have the marginal impaction or not. This is very important in the approach you will select and the surgical technique. And again, the displacement of the head, the pelvic brain fragment rotates externally, quadrilateral plates internally, and the head become in between it sometimes in CT, they call it swinging doors of the western salon. In the anterior column fracture, we will decide surgical interference if we have the criteria of displacement of the articular surface, the incongruity, instability, or loss of reduction. And the same techniques we have mentioned in the anterior wall, we will apply here and we will add some tricks for reduction using the chance screw as a joy stick technique, using the reduction clamps to manipulate the whole anterior column, and you may put a pointed reduction clamp like here to approximate the fragments. You may pull them together and apply your plate fixation after achieving reduction. Again, it is possible in anterior column fracture to put leg screws. You have long surface area, wide surface area, long the fracture line, and you can achieve multiple leg screw fixation, and you may put as well a neutralization plate according to the fracture pattern. This is an example of attacking anterior injury through the ileo-inguinal approach with anterior plate fixation. In, sometimes you may need the ileo-femoral approach we mentioned in the first lecture. In some cases, there is no other approach to attack a fracture like this except the ileo-femoral approach in order to regain the anatomical reduction and fixation of such injuries. Coming to the anterior wall or column with posterior hemi-transverse fracture, we may mm, miss this injury. It is sometimes difficult to diagnose. You may diagnose it as T fracture, sometimes both column fracture. So we, would, we should differentiate between the T-shaped fracture and this type of injury. The T-shaped fracture will not have the anterior column element. There is transverse element and vertical element. That's it. But here we have anterior injury. Then how can we differentiate both column fractures from this type of injury? The both column fractures, there is floating articular surface. The articular surface is not more attached to the iliac bone. But here we have still articular roof part or articular surface attached to the iliac bone. This differentiates this type from both column fractures. And we have, of course, disruption of the ischiopubic rings. You can diagnose it having anterior column injury with posterior injury, still some articular roof intact with the iliac bone. And in CT scan, in the iliac oblique as well, you can see this 
iliac fracture line and the hemitransverse pipe. Usually the posterior hemitransverse is many, many displaced, usually. And in CT scan, we have this picture of the anterior component and the an anterior posterior hemitransverse fracture line. So this injury is mainly anterior and the attack is mainly anterior through any inguinal approach or other anterior approach. And you will manipulate the fracture through the windows in order to address the anterior column injury first. You will reduce the anterior column injury and usually you start the building up your reduction from the iliac crest down. And then after reducing the anterior column as mentioned before in the anterior column injury, you will fix it and then you will address the posterior column fracture. In most cases you can reduce it indirectly with the longitudinal and side traction. But for final adjustment of the reduction, you will use the pelvic reduction clamps directly over the fracture sites, and then you will fix this hemitransverse posterior element with leg screws. If it is comminuted, you may put other solution rather than these leg screws. You may put a spring plate under the pelvic brain plate or you may put a buttress plate. If you plan to apply these plates, the modified stopper approach will help you probably more than the inguinal approach. In conclusion, anterior acetabular injuries are associated with disruption of the anterior support of the femoral head in varying degrees of instability. The femoral head may dislocate anterior and medial. Pelvic brain rotates externally, quadrilateral plates internally, and the head is in between. Marginal impaction should be addressed. Open reduction and internal fixation is indicated to restore congruity and stability of this injury. Anterior exposures are selected according to fracture morphology and surgeon's preference. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much indeed, very valuable again.